I'm working on some stretch fabric today and it's actually a knitted fabric. There's a difference between what we call knitted fabrics and stretch fabrics. St stretch fabric tend to have a four way stretch. So the kind of stretch that we're looking at, we're looking at spandex and lycra. Um, things that are finely woven, it's usually that shiny stuff like scuba that you're working on um, that has a lot more stretch all the way around. Knitted fabrics is a little bit different. You can feel it. It feels warm like a jumper, um, a lot thicker. The looser uh, threads let you see that it's actually a knit. And what you'll find is that you can easily identify the front from the back and that it's a looser weave. And it has a stretch just going across the two ways there. You don't have a stretch going that way up and down. So this is a two-way stretch, we've got a four-way stretch. So we treat this with a jersey needle. Jersey needles have a ball point at the end, so sometimes they're known as ball point needles. So that's a really easy one to work out. And then for stretch fabric, like this four-way stretch, we use what we call stretch needles, which are a lot finer, a lot more pointer. They will go between the fibers of um, this spandex and it will be fine. But the problem with the stretch needle on a jersey fabric, on a uh, knitted, loosely woven fabric like this is, it will pierce into the fibres. And then after a while of wearing and washing and stretching, you'll start getting pulls like ladders and tights. So you don't really want to be using stretch needles on knitted fabrics. And the same with spandex. If you use a ballpoint needle in spandex, the lycra is your four-way stretch, what you'll find is you might get skip stitches. So you need to be careful with which needles you use for which project. And we're working on knitted fabric today, so I'm gonna show you how to set the machine up for this knitted fabric, let's get to it. Okay, so on this overlock, my tension settings are all at four. My differential feed is at one, and my stitch length is at three. And my knife setting is in the middle, so it's on five on this machine and I have my stitch finger set for N, which is normal standard sewing. And that will help me identify the setting I need to use on my knit. Now I've got um, a sample of knit here, and this is quite stretchy. So it's not a good idea to stretch the fabric. Try and make it relaxed and nice and flat. So I've got a nice piece here which hasn't been stretched. Now when I place this fabric in the machine, my differential feed is set at one. What I ideally am looking for is my fabric to feed forward through the machine, okay? But I know that perhaps it might not do. Now when I sit that fabric down onto my mat I can see that the fabric sort of started curving around as I got closer towards the end so it sort of waved in the machine so I'm going to just increase the differential feed up ever so slightly and I'm going to try it on another piece And you can see there were no waves in that and it sat perfectly straight as I fed that through. And that only took a tiny adjustment on the machine to give me a perfect straight line. I'm gonna just show you a real difference. So if I take my differential feed all the way up to, you can see the fabric's trying to veer off over to the left and I get a result like that and if I go all the way down to 0.7 the fabric started gathering up again and you can see we've got waves in the fabric. So the differential feed is the first thing I look for when I'm setting the tension on my fabric. Now this machine has been working perfectly at settings of four because it's practically a brand new machine. 
So the differential feed just needs to be adjusted slightly above one. I'm going to just stitch out on some fabric just to show you it's fine. Now with a, without a cap pulling it at the other end, this has actually worked out perfectly fine. So stitches are perfect. It's all overlocking on the edge. My Y's at the back are looking great. My loopers are looking fine. So I'm happy with that stitch and I get a stretch. It's actually not a stretch fabric that way. It stretches this way, but I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is reduce this tension right down to two and stitch on the fabric. And what I want you to see is just have a quick look at the stitches. Now everything on the front looks perfect. I've even got the overlocking sitting on the edge of the fabric, but have a look. When I flip this fabric over, there's something going awry. Now we know that it is the left needle because I've just shown you that I've changed it. But now if you wanted to identify what it was using your um, chart, look for the needles because we know that the loops are fine because they're overlocking on the edge and they're not really uneven so we're looking at the needle stitches there so we're going to get the right needle and the left needle okay so what we want to do is have a look at the difference that it makes to my fabric so what I'm looking for is which of the two charts shows me stitches like that that it's perfect on that side and everything's sitting perfectly but i can see loops hoops like that so i'll just pick up one randomly now i can't tell which one it is so i'm just going to have a look at that now if i go along the charts and just work my way up i can see that something's happening here but that's showing me the loopers are not sitting neatly. So it's not actually this one, even though it looks like it could be, it's not actually that one there. So keep carrying on and there is something going on there, but not quite. And if I keep going on, actually, but actually the needles are looking rather loose, but they're not hanging over the edge like that. So I'm going to have a look at the other chart just to compare, just to see, because it'll be help me fine tune which one I'm looking for. Now my fabric isn't gathered, so I know it's not that. So it's not anything going on there. Keep going up the chart. And at some point we'll start seeing a similar sort of pattern happening. We can see that we're forming loops with a needle. The needle is that blue thread there and the yellow thread is pulling the loops over. And if I carry on up there, they're not quite as extreme as that. So we're down here somewhere. So if I isolate that little bit there, it looks like that's actually my stitches. That's replicating my stitches. So if I flip that over, that's in the section number two. Okay, and that two is on my left needle chart and in fact that's exactly what we've done here so that's my left needle which we adjusted and that's the reading number two so my left needle at two gives me the same result as i've seen on this fabric today so that's how we use the tension chart so that exercise was really simple. It was really just to show you how easy it is for you to identify where the fault lies. Now in the real world, it won't be just one of the tension discs that's at fault. It could be two, three, or all four of them, which could be wrong. So I'm gonna go through an exercise now. The tension discs have been messed about. I've not adjusted the differential feed. When you're working with any fabric, I want you to just always set the differential feed correct. So you want that fabric to be going through the machine straight ahead. If it veers off to the left or the right, just adjust the differential feed until you get that machine, uh, until you get that fabric going th straight through the machine. I'm going to stitch this fabric out and we're going to use the chart to help us work out what the settings should be. Okay, so I've got my fabric is 
not sitting straight. I can see that the tension is too tight because you can see that the fabric is sort of being um, squashed in the loops and they've been squashed in the loops because can you see how that upper looper is pulled to the back so the top loopers are being pulled right under what we're working out is that this thread is either too loose or the under looper is too tight so if it's the loopers that are not working right let's grab the looper charts so we want the lower looper and the upper looper so the upper looper is this one here and it's going right over to the back so if it's going right over to the back let's have a look like that so what that's telling me is I can recognize that the upper looper is looking like the chart over here like that so what I'm going to do is show you on the dial where that is and that's showing me that the tension should be is probably sitting around one which means it's too loose okay because on this tension chart is telling me the machine is happiest at four so it's three numbers so if it's at for happiest at four it's one two three numbers too low so if i show you on the dials and there we are i've set the dial too low so i set it three numbers too low so i'm going to take it up by three notches one two three and that takes me up to four so that is actually what this machine wants to be at anyway so four is correct so let's go back to our piece of fabric and we're going to have a look and see if that works so we're going to leave the setting at four and I'm going to stitch another row and see if that has made a positive difference to our piece of fabric So that's the original that was the first one and there is a difference and we can see now that that's a lot less pulled isn't it than the first one now we're still getting a bit of waving going on and that waving is telling me that something a little bit too tight and you can see that the overlocking isn't quite sitting on the edge because there's something being forced for it to not quite sit so what that's telling me is I need to maybe look at the lower looper so I'm going to have a look at the lower looper and see where the fabric is just too tight and if it waves so I can see it's sort of puckering around this sort of numbers and there's a lot of stretch going on over here I'm going to turn it over to the back and see if I can see any difference there so I can see around here that it's still sitting on the edge but it's a little bit uncomfortable around here that it's sort of been pulled to the back can you see how it's been pulled to the back there so I would say around this number, whatever number that is, and that's telling me it's around five. Let's just check that again. So just looking at it from there, it looks like it's around that sort of area, doesn't it? It's being pulled around there. So if I have a look there, and there we go. I've set the machine a bit too high so if I set that back down to four and then stitch another row now that is looking really good isn't it but 
Now, can we see the loopers are sitting perfectly on the edge, which tells me that the knife setting is perfectly fine and it's sitting straight. You can see that the left needle is sitting nice and uh, neatly on the top, but the right needle is being pulled right in. It's pulling the fabric down too tight and it feels too tight. It's hard to show this. So that's the chart for the right needle. You can sort of feel it's too tight around here. So what we need to do is just have a look at the machine. The tension dial's at eight. What I need to do is just reduce that. So reduce it a couple. And have a look and feel how that goes. And it feels still a little bit too tight. But you know what, if I left it like that, it'd be fine because I still get the stretch on there, but I could still reduce it a little bit more if I wanted to. And there we go. That's sitting at five and I'm happy with that. And I've got a nice, good stretch on there. And when I open this fabric up, I'm not seeing any stitches. Um, even though that's the left needle. And I think just working on that tension chart to find out those numbers and correctly balance them, hopefully that's showed you how to do it for yourself. And maybe you could have a little play and practice doing that for yourself. We're launching a new app to customize a range of patterns to your measurements. Now, so this is a really simple app. All you have to do is select the garment you want to make enter your measurements and the app will draw out the pattern pieces to your size. Now you have the ability to create profiles for both yourself, friends and for family so that you can enter their measurements and store them so that you don't have to drag them back every time you want to make them something. There will be video link tutorials in the app too, so helping you create those patterns and garments really quickly and easily. And if you like the sound of that, all you need to do is head over to sewthis.co.uk. I'll put the link in the description below. Hit that link, enter your email address, and you will be one of the first people to receive information as soon as the app is updated, progressed, and released. And I will see you soon.